turn with me to Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 14. While you're turning there, say this with me. Say before, before during, during, even after, yeah. I will give God a victory praise. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look here. Let's go to. Let me start reading here. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Maniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Lord, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Say congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid. Say, Be not afraid. afraid. Nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. Say that. The battle is not yours. You can look at somebody right now and tell them that the battle is not yours, but God's. (laughs) Tomorrow. Go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and, sh- and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Juriel. Verse 17 says this, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Just in case you got a battle, I'm letting you know right now, according to the word of God, you don't need to fight right about now. Amen? Set yourselves Stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. In verse 18, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Now, go to verse 20. And they rose early in the morning, so early in the morning, and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Ye shall be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Before, during, and after. I'm going to go with the before here. Okay? There are times when things may come your way. You don't necessarily know when they're coming. Or maybe you do know when they're coming. But the bottom line with God is, if a situation arises, he has already set up some type of plan already in order just for you. Your situation might not be like my situation. Your situation, my situation might not be like yours. But, because who would have thought to appoint singers to fight a battle? All right. But according to him, it says that the battle was not yours. So a lot of times we find ourselves in a fight. We're in such a divisive time these days where we're constantly in a mindset, everybody's against me, or this, that, and other. And a lot of times, the enemy ain't really paying that much attention to us unless we start doing good. Now, unless you start walking in your promise, that's when the enemy likes to show up. That's when he decides he wants to trip you up. But in this passage of scripture right here, this is basically a before. And basically what happened was, you know, the enemy was trying to... They were surrounded. There was a multitude, okay? But God, again, he decided to tell you that battle is not for you to fight. That battle is the Lord's. So in the middle of that, I don't know what song they sung, but whatever song it was, I guarantee you it was as unto the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? I guarantee you, it was whatever it was, it was a sweet sound in God's ear. Now, again, we don't always have to come to church to start singing that song. Okay. 
whatever song that God has put in your belly, whenever you know that times are, are, are coming up, when bad times are coming up, crazy things may not, you know, might not be coming, some type of storm, God will give you some word to utter back to him. It ain't necessarily for everybody, your neighbor, your, your church, and everybody else. It's for between you and God. Because sometimes you're battling right there within your house. So therefore, you go to your closet, whatever that thing may be, and you go to God and say, God, I love you, I adore you. And however melodious your, your voice is, you give it to him. Okay. Whatever it is that God has put in you to say. Say that. If it's a simple God, I love you beyond everything, and it is b between you and him, you just sung that song back to God. And he loved it. And the battle was already won. You know, there's times where you're going to go through a situation. Somebody turn with me to Psalms 23. We know it. The 23rd Psalm, we used to quote it when we were kids. You know, and we should still quote it now. You know, I mean, you, you had to know this scripture, the 23rd Psalms. Situations you may have went or going through. And a lot of times you're trying to figure out why me, why I got to go through it. Might be because you was picked to go through it. You may have been the one that was chosen to go through it. And there's so many people in the Bible that were picked to go through a situation. Okay. And a lot of times it's just for God to know exactly how much you love him. It's going to be okay because he's going to take good care of you. Amen? We're good. 23rd Psalm. Whoa. Yeah, let's do that. Praise break, praise break, praise break. Right. I'm about comfortable right about now anyway. Praise God. Real comfortable right now. 23rd Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Say, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Say runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Understand forever and ever. That's forever. That's like a long time. There's no limits to that. Look, back in our first scripture, in Second Chronicles. Basically, they started singing, his mercy endureth forever. And here we are again, basically talking about his mercy and his grace. I'll fear no evil. Because a lot of, when you are picked, say picked, and, and look, understand, don't be scared of being the one to be picked. A lot of us preachers didn't want to be necessarily picked. I mean, unless I'm different. I did not want to be picked. I really, it was some times that I, that I wanted to just sit the sideline and stay there. But when you picked, you ain't end up going through a little something with what you were picked to do. It might get dark sometimes. It may be a valid experience every now and then, but I'm telling you and I'm encouraging you and letting you know that it's okay. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have nothing to fear. God has not given me any reason to fear. Now, I don't care where I walk, I don't care where I talk, where I work, I don't care where I'm at, what word I have to speak, I have no reason to fear. In this day and time, we're so scared of taking the risk that God has already give, given us a path. But yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. I don't know why I'm standing there, but I'm letting you know right now. Do not stop in the middle of the valley. 
Continue your steps. Continue your walk. Do not stop in the middle of the valley. There may be floods. There may be animals. There may be things in the valley. You don't like animals now, do you? You got to keep walking during. Yea, though I walk through. You keep going. When the floods are coming and things like that, you keep walking. Don't sit there and look at the flood. This water getting high. No, you keep going. You keep walking. Do not stop. Go past go. Leave the fear to the outside. That's not your package. That did not have your name on it. You did not sign for fear. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. Look. It's Christmas season, the holiday season. You know, we talk about the birth of Christ. You know, <laughs> there was a vessel that Jesus came through. Her name would be Mary. All right? She was chosen. All right? Now, go to Luke chapter 1. Go to Luke chapter 1. Man, I'm telling you, sometimes where we're uncomfortable when we're chosen. But boy, when God has it already laid out for you, you might as well praise him during. You might as well. Because trust me, he's not going to stop. God will not stop. God is so persistent. Sometimes we wonder why we can't sleep or wonder why we can't rest relentless. His love for us, totally relentless. But when he places something on us to do, he means it. It's an honor to know that he did it, that he actually believed enough in us is to be picked for the jobs that he picked us for. And a lot of times, you know, I, I, I'm guilty. I wish I, I can't raise both feet right now. That wouldn't be wise. It'd be funny. You could put it on YouTube. But we don't do that. It was some times where I did not want to be picked. It could be you might want to, somebody might need the usher. That's not my calling. I'm not the best person. Oh, it, I'm just being honest. But somebody is, is great at that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, go, sit, go sit down. I'm the mean usher. Why are you still standing here? Go sit down. That's not the way that's supposed to work. You don't see all them seats over <laughs> there. But you go away. I, I, I thank God I'm a decent youth pastor. I'm a decent praise and worshiper. But I'm called to do those things. You know what I mean? I'm okay with that. You know? But I couldn't imagine being in a traditional church with white glove and trying <laughs> Y'all need to read the scripture. Y'all done got way, way off. <laughs> Luke chapter 1. We were talking about Mary. Okay? Yes, being chosen. Verse 36 says, hmm. let me go back to 35. Well, I'm going to go back to 34. And uh, then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that the holy thing which thou shalt be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, the, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord Say, be it unto me 
That's a hallelujah moment. Because it's an honor to be chosen. Be it unto me according to thy word, and the angel departed from her. How wonderful is that? Verse 46 says this. She starts singing a song. To who? God. Not necessarily the circumstance, because we a lot of times when we get to singing a song or this, that, and other, it's about it's from our emotions or whatever, or what we're going through at a time. But Mary had already started talking about some a victorious statement right here. My daughter Jalen brought up the fact that I yelled out my I, I command my soul to praise the Lord uh, at a, something we had going on. I, I do that. I do that. I, it, there's some times where you have to let your soul know who's boss. You understand what I'm saying? Because your soul don't always want to do nothing. It may just want to not move. You understand? Well, this is what Mary says in verse 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Sounds like to me she understood exactly what was going on. And as we continue the, the story of, with Mary giving birth to the Son of God, the enemy didn't like that. Tried to kill him. The whole nine. Some of your promises, some of the things that God has called you to do, he has tried to take from you. He has tried to kill it before it has even moved. Well, I declare right now in the name of Jesus that you are able to open up your mouth and say, devil, you won't stop this in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that, everywhere that I step, I'm going to possess the land. Everywhere I go, I shall be successful. Why? Because I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And I have no fear of what's to come. My shepherd took good care of me. So I have no fear. I trust God. I trust him because of this son, Jesus Christ. I trust him. So therefore, during, it might look a little dark at different times. But there's a light at the end of that. So therefore, I already know while I'm walking, I ju I'm just not supposed to stop. See, there was no process in order for Mary to stop during this time. The baby was coming. You understand what I'm saying? He was coming out. And a whole lot of our promises and callings, you can't stop them right now. They are coming. And you mothers that have had babies, you ain't going to stop it from coming. That is sure enough not trying to push back in. It is the, the process is on. You understand what I'm saying? And there's a promise at the end of that thing. A victorious promise at the end of it. Can somebody say hallelujah in here? Hallelujah. Glory to God for the process. Now look, there's also another little situation. There's an after. What do you do in the after? Let's go to Exodus. I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 15. This was Moses. This was Moses. This is the Moses that didn't talk so good. Didn't use proper English or Hebrew, whatever it is he was doing at the time. He st 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 stuttered. He had issues with his speech, you know. Just like there's so many things that we're just not perfect about. You know what I mean? I know I'm extremely handsome, but at the same time, you know, a big boy, a big head, shiny tooth, you know what I mean? My right eye don't open up all the way. But I thank God every day that he chose this one who in, in days past probably should have been in somebody's rehab. You understand what I'm saying? In days past probably should have been in somebody's mental institution. In days past... Probably should have been in somebody's jail, or better yet, dead. But then God showed me something, that you was going to live past 24, the thing that you thought you were not going to live past. 
because you had fear of what man could do to you. And it wasn't just somebody else. It was some things that I was doing to myself, the flesh. But I walked through that valley. I also had some people praying with me walking through that valley. Some people I didn't even know knew how to pray was helping me get through the valley. So basically, so I can get to the after, so I can get to the point of victory. So those of you, everybody that's on the sound of my voice, whether, it's, whether we streaming or in here right now with us, you praying for somebody right now that's at that age that I was going through, I pray in Jesus' name for this victory that, that I'm talking about right now, this, this victory of praise right now, that you have it. That that person, that person, that son, that daughter is protected in Jesus' name. And they are being pulled through that valley. You understand what I'm saying? That, that, that's a victory right here. There's a victory. Shout victory. Say, I have the victory. Me and my house. Hallelujah. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15. Then sang Moses. Think about it. Moses stuttered. And it's awful funny, those that stutter can really sing. Just put that on. I just want y'all to hear that. But they did. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He is be Say strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. That's possession. He is my God. My enemies drowned, y'all. My enemies were taken away. God lifted up a standard in that sea so me and mine can get through. Like right now. Like us that's in this place, us that's streaming right now, you, he held up a standard for you to get through. Don't stop in the valley. Keep walking to the point of victory for your after. Your after is so much better than your before. Your after is so much better than what you went through. That ain't yours. That's not your package. That fear factor is not yours. The devil is allowed to tell you you're supposed to be scared of what is in the valley because that's a temporary state. So my prayer is that in your mind, in your spirit, anything that you have that you may think that's going to stop you right in the middle of the valley, I'm telling you there's a victory right now in your after. Your after could be right now. So I'm praying right now that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt what your after looks like. That you have written the vision down like in Habakkuk chapter 2 and made it plain. That way it ain't all scribbled or this, that, and other. Looking like you wrote it with my feet. That you understand how great God is in the midst of a little storm that you may have had. And look, your storm might not be mine, but it still was a storm. Therefore, you walk through that day, and you get to your after, say after. During this after period, I'm going to praise God and glorify God because he is that good. And I'll shout his name because he is that good. I'm talking to Jehovah God. Anybody in here ever needed to be provided for? Anybody in here have ever had to be protected? Anybody in this place ever had a situation where they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that that battle wasn't theirs? Anybody in here ever had a situation where they knew they wasn't supposed to be fearful of something, but yet they were, and yet God delivered them from it? Look, this is not for the perfect people. This is for people that go to God with every piece of vulnerability you may have, your humbleness before him, and say, God, I have to get to this after. I know there's a victory before, so I'm going to shout hallelujah before, during, I'm going to glorify your name during, I'm going to make up words during. 
I'll, I'll make up words. I'll go in the spirit at whatever comes out of my mouth. I will give it to God wherever that altar is. And I will let God know how much I trust him in the valley. And when I come out of that valley, my shout might be a little bit louder. It is as unto the Lord. You understand how weak the, the enemy is. Trying to steal your peace. That's not for you. For him to take something from you, like he tried so often throughout the word. There's three people I used right there that the enemy tried to take something from. Every one of us in here, at one time or another, the enemy has tried to steal from you, including our lives, including, it could be our relationships, including your finances, including your children. But, according to the Bible, as I wait, while I'm waiting, I'm going to praise him anyhow. And I'm going to lift up a victorious shout. It gets louder as I go. Every victory, every, every situation that the enemy may have put before me. That first praise might have been, oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That was all right. Then he might have blessed me again. He might have delivered me again. And I'm like, whoo! That was, yes, God, hallelujah. Whoo! But that next one, I might get downright ignorant as opposed to what the world will say. I don't know how loud it's going to be, but it shall be as unto the Lord. The devil cannot stop me in my after. He wished he'd have killed what I had in my before. He wished he would have done that. Why are you still sitting here now? Why are you still in this place right now? Because the grace and mercy of our God, he showed you what to say and how to say it, when to say it, and he's just that good. Yeah, it's the last Wednesday of 2017, and yeah, this year flew by, but his mercies are new every morning. So and tomorrow is still 2017. So guess what I'm going to look for in the morning? His new mercies in the morning because I'm going to wake up with a smile on my face, kicking the devil in places he ain't never been kicked before. And I'm going to thank God every day because he's just that good and he is just that wonderful. I will shout hallelujah to the most high God and let him know how much he has benefited my soul. I command my soul. To worship our God. I'll let him know how wonderful he is. I will let him know how great he is. Even through the valley. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the church say hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, it's cold outside. But the enemy is defeated. Yeah, it might have rained a little bit. But once again, the devil is defeated. He's going to protect me on the road. He's going to protect you on your job. He's going to take good care of you and your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Before, take your before picture. Take your during picture. And take your after picture. I guarantee you, if you place it before God, that picture at the end of that thing is glorified in Jesus' name. Why are you still here? Because you are in your after right now in Jesus' name. Glorify God. God, I will glorify you no matter what's going on. In Jesus' name. Your boy finished. Hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise.